cross-border insecurity on the rise in the north region of the Republic of Cameroon. Illegal importation of explosive devices has become a lucrative business gain grounds in that part of the country. Authorities have seized over 200 improvised explosive devices imported into the country through neighboring the borders with neighboring Nigeria and the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon. The fight against secessionist activities continues gaining steam in the northwest region. General Carl Valet, commander of the 5th Military Region and his collaborators continue going against separatist fighters, arresting some of them, killing others and promising peace to the population. Thanks, dear viewers, for joining us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television, live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. We begin this newscast in the north region of the Republic of Cameroon, where cross border crime is on the rise. A total of 200 improvised explosive devices and tons of illicit goods and drugs have been seized by custom officials in the north region of the country. Smanjikan Gebre has more. 200 improvised explosive devices seized by custom officials in the north region. According to commander of the Hortz to illicit trade operation for the far north, okay. north and Adamawa regions, these improvised explosive devices transported in a vehicle from Nigeria were heading to the far north region to amplify Boko Haram attacks which the population have incurred. On vient de prendre les, les matériels. It is also thanks to the fruitful halt to illicit trade operation that the customs service was able to seize tons of contraband goods that were being transported from Nigeria to Cameroon. For the six months I've been at the head of this operation, we have made a great interception of illicit goods like rice with tons of it full in our warehouses in Garoua. Marwa and Gaundiri. We also have non biodegradable plastic papers, illicit sugar, and drugs of all sorts. More key sold in Nigeria. We have two main objectives. The first objective is the fight against smuggling. Smuggling is goods that uh, are goods that enter the country without passing through the customs service. And then the second one is to fight against goods not authorized to enter the country. We call this one goods which are with a prohibition. So we have goods like uh, cement, like sugar, these are goods not arise to enter the country. Following the last operation, the governor of the north region takes a decision to suspend activities of stalled vehicles which transports people and goods from Nigeria to Cameroon and vice versa. <laughs> And the fight against separatist activities continues gaining steam in the crisis hit northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon. In the northwest region, General Ka Valle and his uh, collaborators of the 5th Military Region are uh, stepping up the fight against secessionist activities in the last suppression in the Boyo Division in the northwest region of the country. Uh, several weapons were seized and of course several separatists British fighters killed over 17 of them and over five who were arrested and the weapons were seized and uh, brought under the control of the military by the uh, military by the uh, boys of General Ka Valle and the other top military officials who are fighting cessationist activities in that part of the country locally made uh, guns and other uh, munitions uh, seized from the separatist fighters in the northwest region of the country. 
and during uh, a meeting with the population, the fifth, the commander of the fifth military region, General Ka Vale, uh, spoke to inhabitants of uh, Fundong, and he urged them to seek for peace and, of course, to denounce separatist activities and also to breathe fear and live in peace. And the call was made by General Kavale and a Congress said divine. And, of course, uh, the, the commanders of the 5th Joint Military Region and the 5th Gendarmerie Region, respectively, at the Fundong Market, that was yesterday, August 30, as the population was encouraged to stand as a man or to stand as one man to fight against uh, crime wave and violence within the context of the Anglophone crisis. It should be noted that Boyo is one of the hardest hit divisions in the Northwest region. Separatist activity started after the assassination of the two uniform officers in Belo about three years ago and life has increasingly become difficult with the increase, increasing um, price of basic commodities in that part of the country. General Ka Vale, commander of the 5th Military uh, Region, encouraged the population to brief all the odds and fight for the return to peace and normalcy in their areas of residence. And now to Ndui, the Dongamantum Division, Northwest Region of the Republic of Cameroon Council officials are striving to enhance uh, social life within a crisis context, within a context of a crisis uh, that has been pulling on for close to four years today. Immaculate Fogo reports. Infamous for the Ngabu massacre, Ndu subdivision hottest heat by the Anglophone crisis in the Dungamantum Division, Northwest region of Cameroon. A midterm evaluation session was organized by the Ndu Council amidst encroaching security threats from separatist fighters in the neighboring division. The mayor hailed his collaborators for braving the threats and working for a return of normalcy. Elected within a challenging security context, the mayor, Alaji Bono Kanfon, and other council officials have been at work striving to save the municipality from underdevelopment challenges. Despite the fact that there's still a lot of crisis around the new area, but together with my councillors and the staff of this municipality, contractors, we have been able to execute so much. We call on the populations of Ndu to, to clamor up for peace. Speaking at the session, the senior divisional officer's representative, Ivo Chia Mungwa, called on councillors to sensitize the population on the importance of peace, which will help create a favorable environment for school resumption come October 5th. One person has died and several others injured in an accident in the Penda Mboko. It is, of course, in Banga in the Mungo Division, littoral region of the Republic of Cameroon and elsewhere. Notably, here in the economic capital, a Dwalai private car went into flames at the city in Dokpat neighborhoods. Manjik and Gabriel has more. It was a weekend of accidents on the National Road Number 5. At the Pendamboko roundabout, a pickup whose occupants were heading to the West Region had a head on collision with a Corolla Toyota descending to the littoral region. According to an onlooker, the driver of the Corolla car wanted to escape from entering a pothole when it collided with a pickup that was heading to the West Region. The sum of 15 million francs CFA was reported to have burned alongside the vehicle. One of the occupants in the Toyota Corolla car died with several others hospitalized in Banga. 
Around the Kumbe Chief's Palace in quarter one, still on the national road number five, it was another face-to-face -face contact between two cars. This time around, a dinner transporting pineapples heading to the west region collided with an intercity vehicle heading to Douala. Again, the ugly state of the road provoked the accident. No dead or injured persons were recorded in this accident, just the pineapples that were destroyed. Finally, at the Serene Dog Bad neighborhood, it was a private vehicle that caught fire in the middle of the road. Even though its occupants were saved, some of their belongings burned alongside the vehicle. The Army Rescue Unit responded immediately to put up the flames. Injured victims of the road accident in Penda Mboko are under medical attention in Banga and we stay in the Mongo Division, littoral region of the country, to talk about inhabitants of a Bang Mama village who have taken to the streets to protest against what they qualify as the authoritarian rule of the traditional ruler of the area. He was allegedly imposed on the people by the administration. Details with Immaculate Fogwe. The road linking several localities in the Bangmama village, Mungu Division, Lithua region of Cameroon. Even the most robust vehicles face difficulties while plying on the stretch of road. Apart from the problem of poor road network, the villagers are in need of electricity, portable water, and other social amenities. The deplorable state of the road has led to an increase in transport fare. Transporting a good from the farm to the market is very difficult. The government should help us. Another major preoccupation of the population is that of the chieftaincy title. According to them, since the installation of Dipanda by the divisional officer as the new chief of Ibangmama village, nothing good has ever occurred in the area. The situation has caused the inhabitants to storm the streets protesting against his rule. What really has happened to bring up the tension of the population in this village is when we lost our chief, there was no chief again. Finally, the South Prefect came for his visit contact and he thought to help us was to make a representative of a chief whereby he can gather the people until when they will come and install a new chief. And the representative created by the South Prefect now was Mr. Dipanda. Has non respect of the orders of the divisional officer angered the population provoking the strike action. After the creation, he instructed Mr. Dipanda. The instruction was this, you, Mr. Dipanda, as you are here to work with these people, go to the council of Chief Ayawa, who was working with Chief Ayawa. Don't remove anybody from that cycle and don't add anybody that cycle. Go and work with those people until when they will come and install the chief. One day after, when the sub prefect went back, Dipanda was now here to hold his first meeting. And we, the members of the council, we realized that Mr. Dipanda immediately has disobeyed the soft prefect completely. He did not take anything concerning what the soft prefect meant to talk to instruct him. He was creating new members to work with him. According to some of the inhabitants, many of them are now called Ambazonians for denouncing the rule of Chief Dipanda. They are calling on the administration to install the legitimate chief who is the son of late chief Ehawa Gastrid. Ahead of the 2020-2021 academic year, national and international education stakeholders are discussing the safety of pupils and the students. They are meeting in a workshop here in Cameroon's economic capital, uh, Douala, and this is within the framework of the project of the Global Partnership for Education. And education cannot wait. And the uh, meeting here in Douala on the, the auspices of the United United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and the meeting that will run from uh, today, August 31st to September 5th, 2020, here in Douala. The participants will strategize on the measures that 
have to be implemented in order to ensure that the children who go to school are saved from COVID-19 and are saved from security challenges for those in the northwest and southwest regions of the country and even in the far north region of the country and even in the east and in the south with regards to uh, sporadic incursions from uh, Sel Selika rebels and of course Boko Haram attacks in the far north region of the country for greater details on this take a listen to Mputu Ile he's the UNESCO regional advisor for education in Central Africa and uh, Michael Quenty is the lead inspector of pedagogy for education technologies at the Ministry of Basic Education We'll be coming back to that extract in uh, our subsequent news editions. Coming up next, Talking Point. Thanks for staying with us in Talking Points. We are receiving a politician, member of the CRM, the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM political party, Akumanga Jasper. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Babila. The pleasure is mine and greetings to all. The military continues chasing, killing, and arresting separatist fighters in the northwest region of the country, in particular, the last operation in the Boyo Division, uh, led by General Cavalier, commander of the 5th Military Region, uh, of, and of course, General Congo Certifying, who is the commander of the 5th Gendarmerie Region. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at the problem at ground, following the Ngabu cases that we got and other cases, in reality, you come to discover that the people in these two regions are no more secured. And the reasons why most of uh, the people of soil are not more going back home for one reason or another. And I think actually if you now want to analyze this issue, you come to discover that today we don't even know who is who actually, who is killing if actually the people killing uh, the separatist fighters or military is killing. You have a lot of people now that are paying price and uh, there's this issue of black legs of which uh, if uh, you have any uh, misunderstanding with whosoever these guys start calling you black legs let's say for instance a girl from northwest happened to date a military they'll go pick her kill that she's a black leg if you have any issue, if uh, might be an amber guy is interested in a lady, you yourself you are interested, they come and there is an issue of black legs. So at the end of the day, this whole issue of black legs and the killing, we don't really know if some people are now using the crisis to set a scores or actually it is still the fighting and uh, for what we know. But in reality, Babila, if you look, uh, it is not more safe as, at this particular point. But one thing for sure that we are really disturbed because is just because the government is doing actually nothing about the whole issue. Why are you saying that government is doing nothing about the whole issue? What do you make of all the um, measures that the government has taken this far, the instructions from the presidency of the republic, from the prime minister, and of course the soldiers who are on the ground, uh, seeing that they are struggling to restore peace, they want to put an end to all the secessionist activities. Yeah, I think it's easier said than done. And uh, if one of them who have happened to go down in the field, uh, make us to understand that he have gone there and discovered this, in reality we will now start believing. But uh, you know, uh, our country actually, if you look well, we don't have a leader anymore. And uh, we won't like uh, we hide it. We don't have a leader? The president yeah. of the republic is there? Uh, you know, uh, in between a woman who lost her husband, and a woman that the husband is still alive but not playing the duty of her husband, there's no difference, right? 
reasons why we said that the head of state is not playing the duties of a head of state actually he spent all his time receiving the ambassador of france and other issues that had nothing to do with the country remember even his signature he have given it out and uh, at every given moment we'll see the prime minister coming to talk on behalf of the president the minister talking on behalf of the president then the question is where is the president there was a moment whereby rumors were again going here and there the president is not more you know you don't even have to blame cameroonians for thinking up to that level because if the father is not more doing what he's supposed to do as a father at a certain moment the children might believe but all that the, the other father government members are acting on the instructions of the head of state we need to see the head of state active as okay let's say for instance we got this uh, crisis we are talking of four years today and it's very very difficult to believe that the head of state have not gone down to see actually what is happening. So tell me, is it possible that uh, two children are fighting and the father cannot come to say, hey, stop. The voice of the father is different from that of the person the father will send on his behalf. So for me, I think actually the head of state should really take this issue at hand. And reasons why, if you see very well, CRM is actually struggling to put some certain things in place. And we'll talk about ahead. those things that you, you want to put in place before the regional elections. Now, the military crackdown going on, can it uh, help restore peace? Can it solve the problem? Sorry? The military crackdown yeah. on the separatist fighters. Can it solve the problem? Can uh, it restore some minimum peace? Uh, actually, two wrongs can never be right. I mean, if I wrong you, you wrong me. At the end of the day, we'll see ourselves fighting. Uh, military, militaries, they have been there. <laughs> and at a certain moment, some of these militaries become friends to these guys. You know, most of us, we have our different villages. These militaries are there in order to save their own life. Remember, they are human like you and I. And uh, it is very difficult when you get into a bush looking for somebody who is hiding somewhere and you don't know where that person is hiding. That person is seeing you coming. So I mean, actually, if you look very well, the militaries who are presently there, remember the day the head of state was giving his speech, uh, that was uh, his New Year speech. You have uh, more than 200 militaries who went down. And what was the result? And we have created a lot of commissions here and there, just like you said. And at the end of the day, what is the result? And the drama that we call the uh, national dialogue, if you look well, what was the output and what were the decision? And what have that decision brings as change in our country? You come to discover that we are playing a sort of drama. You have might be in reality, might be is a statement, but gospel truth if you look well you have ministers who don't even want this issue to get to an end because they are making a lot of money reason being today they will rush and embezzle the public funds saying they want to go because those people have started again so for real it becomes so difficult for one to close his farm and if you look well in a country looking for instance last week uh, you had houses that were destroyed in Bonaberry and one question is this, I think we are all Cameroonians, just like we have been crying and saying, how come you like uh, dislocate thousands of people to please one person? At a certain moment, remember this same Lord Englishman at a certain moment who actually believe on the fact that the first person who have put the, the land value at a certain moment you who owns the land there is already an error you need to find a way amicably to you know maybe that person can pay the price that might be removing the person with the family and how many people so the government really needs to see most of these things in place you talked about uh, soldiers who are falling at the within the context of the crisis who have been killed by separatists and uh, there are questions there because most often we hear the military top officials talking about the number of separatists who have been killed, talking about those who have been captured, the weapons, and so on, but saying nothing practically on 
soldiers who have been wounded or killed and, and things like that. And the information on uh, 200 soldiers who are said to have gone down uh, was not and has not been confirmed by the Ministry of uh, Defence, not been confirmed by the Ministry of Defence. But now, talking about the what government is supposed to do, the crisis, for the crisis to come to an end. What do you think that government has not done till now? Yeah, you said I think Paul B. Uh, President Paul B. has done nothing. What has he not done till now? Uh, apart from not going to the northwest and southwest. Apart of not going there, I think presently uh, they have started something of which uh, if they get the right person to do that, for the fact that they discovered that uh, they have somebody who is at their keeping, I'm talking of Seseko Ayotabe, and uh, it would be difficult if you have somebody at your keeping and you keep on asking every day, who should I dialogue with? They went to Seseko even though I think Ayabacho and uh, Ayamba, they are equally saying that's not the right person. Reason being, you know, the guy have a gun on the head and would might be signed some certain things for his liberation. So I think that's the problem at hand now. But I think uh, if you look well, the national dialogue was a fiasco, a mess, reason being. Uh, I want to find out these guys who came and said they were separatist fighters, they have dropped down their arms. Uh, where are they today and what have the government done with them? Are they still alive? Are they dead? Are they still in the country? Reasons why I ask this question is, Obviously, remember there was an... The, the DDR centers being yeah. reintegrated into the normal... Okay, we need to see them and confirm that they were reintegrated because that's what was said. And I remember there was one guy uh, there was inst uh, there was an installation of an SDO. This guy came and said he was uh, an amber fighter and he have dropped down his arms. He don't want to be part of it again anymore. Before the next day, the guy they made him dead. Overnight. The question now is who killed this guy and what protection did the government give to this guy after he declared and decided not to. So if you look well, it will be difficult to bring the figures of militaries who have died. The issue of militaries who have died so far is just like the, the issue of COVID-19, the people who have actually died because, you know, they don't want to give out the figures for some certain reason, political reasons, reason being, you know, very well, a lot of people have been lobbying to get into militaries, but today it, it is already getting at that stage in those days where we used to force people to get into military. So for that reason, they cannot just reveal the number of people who died knowing very well that he who, no, so who want to go in will be like afraid that he's going to die. So I think that's the problem. But then they are so happy if they put down one amber Oof, you can understand it's a call for concern and they really want to show how the militaries are working. But then, one thing for sure, the militaries are dying and that is not what we need. I am not for or against. I'm not for the ambas, neither am I against. Reasons why I use this word meaning, if you come chess me, then maybe you might receive what we're looking. But hadn't be the father decide to put an end, there will be... Uh, our country have all means. We have good security, etc. Spies here and there. But then, what are we doing with these people? It is right time we really put an end to this, to this, the issue of you know struggling to have uh, a dialogue, an inclusive dialogue. Because I said a word last time, remember this issue of national dialogue. How can we be talking of national dialogue? We have 10 regions and two regions were lacking. These two regions I'm talking of, the southern Cameroon regions, that was the northwest and the southwest, they were lacking for that uh, national dialogue because there was nobody The majority there. of the participants were from the northwest and southwest. Uh, they were not delegated. Remember, there were commissions. And I think if you can tell me whosoever was there, that the southern Cameroon people sent him a message to go talk on their behalf, then I think they were represented. People but actually individuals who hold their position, who went there because they wanted to protect their, their, their position, they went there and, you know, it is not for... Remember, there's an issue whereby most of the people, uh, the elites who are there, are working more for themselves than the people who have made them to be there. Nijon Fundi, chairman of the Social Democratic Front, 
Cardinal Tommy, Simon Munzo, Barista Abu Bala, are these not people uh, trusted by the people from the northwest and southwest regions? Yeah, we and don't, uh, don't, don't forget, uh, Babila Jonathan was equally there. I just want to make you understand, you know, Nijon Frunzi is a politician, and he went there, his party was there, right? If CRM wasn't there, because we, we saw it as a drama. And now, Cardinal Tumi, before then, he have asked that he want to go talk to these people, they, they, but they didn't empower him. And then, if they have refused the men of God to go, did you think it was at that die minute that they will now go and start talking on behalf of the Anglophones? And after then, they sent him there and what they rejected him. So the problem here in reality, these people believe on the people who were locked. If they know today, if they are going closer to Seseko, uh, uh, Ayuk Tabe, meaning they know Seseko had a say as far as the Anglophone crisis is concerned. They could have called him at that particular moment, meaning there is another dialogue that is going to come whereby these people will be included. They will include them and I think at that time we will now start touching, I call it the Genesis. And you know the number of pages we have in the Bible when you start from Genesis before reaching Revelation, then a lot of things must have happened. So I think the Genesis now is that of which the government have gone to meet Seseko Ayok, even though the people, uh, 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 will say no, he's the not. The other is leaders. Not to but be if you them. look well, actually the question now is, okay, if he is not the one, who then bring the person? But I think at the end of the day, the government know with who to dialogue and the person is at their keeping. I think if they do that, then we'll be having peace in our country. All right. Something that such meetings, such discussions, um, negotiation or whatever you, you may call it, with the secessionist leaders shouldn't take place in Cameroon. It should take place on a neutral ground. What do you think about that? Yeah, reason being, you know, nothing, no guarantee actually, because uh, the idea here is you have people from Jaspora, that they have a lot to do. And you have some of the ministers who are there who have a lot to do. They are, you know, they are playing a double game. So at this point in time, if they want to do it here, for instance, you will come in the name of secessionist. What will be your, your, your price? What actually will be the salary you will take back home? So I think for that reason, they have the belief that somebody the military should be kept aside and they go to a neutral ground whereby you will see people you never believe. Yeah, somebody asked the question, if uh, the cessation is come and say, okay, we're coming for the dialogue, for the negotiation, some coming out of the bushes, some coming out of the country, if they don't agree, what is going to happen next? Would they be allowed to go back into the bushes or to go back abroad? <laughs> you already answered that's the question. The question actually is that's no. A difficult question. Yeah, so for real. <laughs> I, I am for that we should get to a neutral ground. But then, Cameroon issues should be sorted between Cameroonians. Wherever be they, where we are, I'm struggling to talk of the foreign burden like French, etc. They shouldn't, they should not involve in it. Let it be an issue of La Republic de Cameroon with the separatists. The Republic of Cameroon, yeah. with the separatists, the government and the separatists. You got it now. All right, now, uh, at the time when the government is uh, struggling to fast track the implementation of some fallouts of the major national dialogue, for example, the decent, the new decentralization laws with the special status for the northwest and southwest regions of the country with uh, upcoming regional elections, your party is standing up to say, no regional elections in the present context. Why? Uh, because actually, I think uh, Cameroonians should be informed. If you look well, I don't think it's right time. And uh, knowing very well the tension we have in place, and uh, we have just two issues. The national president, Maurice come to have two issues he talked of in his press conference. One is the, uh, that they should like see about the ongoing crisis of the 
southern Cameroon, the northwest and the southwest region, and they should stop fire and equally bring back things into order and go in for re-dialogue. I mean re-inclusive dialogue. That's one issue. Two, there is, even Elekam have accepted that there is need to revise and review the uh, uh, electoral code. Okay, now, none of the above mentioned have been done so far. But the most important thing the government in place thing they need to do is to move on with elections, knowing very well that the electoral code is there to favor them. The Anglophone crisis is there to give them, you know, decisions in order to like appoint <laughs> up to date i can i don't just want to say it on air but would i know people from the opposite party that were appointed by cpdm so today reason being if actually things cannot be carried out in these two regions then automatically you bear with me that Cameroon is not one and indivisible if we are still going in for another election because these two regions will not take part. That's an issue. And equally, if the electoral code is still what you and I will know, whereby before you get into a football field, you already know the winner of the day. And then there is no need for election. They just declare and make us to understand that they have decided this time that this is how this is supposed to be. Because actually, the electoral code that we know, if we need to pass through elections in this country in order to change the government in place, then never a day. They, it is not even possible. But the party, the CRM, went in for the last presidential election with the same electoral code, and your president, Professor Maurice Camto, said he won the elections with the same electoral code. Yeah, just like uh, in 1990s, SDF equally won the election. You know, Jonathan, this problem, what we are struggling to bring out here, each time I go on air, there is this issue of the national president who went in for the uh, presidential elections. There is a say for you to bring a change. You need to do everything possible to grab that stick that you can hit and give instructions. Now, they ask a question. Why is it that we never went in for the municipal elections? Remember the government in place, we have seen SDF governing Let's say for instance, we will talk of Bonaberry, Duala 4, that I must I be. Uh, you ha we have. Uh, uh, Bola 3. Uh, this man, uh, what do you call his name? Uh, the, the, the former mayor before. John Downley Kumazi. Kuala. He was there, and for the fact that he was SDF, the people on seat never give, he never had all the budget and everything to run his activities. So knowing very well that even if you go there, they, they still have a say to command and tell you what to do. We discovered that it was of no importance, adding with the ongoing nozzle problem that we have. But then, the long shed, if you look well, you will come to discover that the presidential election hadn't be the elections of which we know even if you are not for, but we from the party, we know our elected president was elected. And then there was an issue, just like I said, because you can't be a referee and at the same time you be a player and you expect the opponent to win. So at this time, what we are struggling and the president is saying, he's asking Cameroonians to sit up because it is a lot of mockery as far as Cameroon is concerned. Everybody goes on air and say, no, oh, allow, the, allow this country, Cameroon, this has done this, this. It's just like we don't have people who can bring change in this country. Look at what is happening actually in Mali. When the population said, it is enough, enough is enough, and then everything will be okay. We just ask our people to be elect and ready. And remember, there's one word the, pre the national president said. The elected pre national president, Maurice Camto, said he will never betray Cameroonians. So he's Professor Maurice Camto talked about a kind of general strike action, general protest 
uh, movement across the country uh, and you're citing the, what happened in Mali and so on. Looking at the previous uh, times when the CRM organized something and there was there were people coming out on the streets across the country and the uh, number of people who, who followed your call and, and so on. Do you think that we can have that in Cameroon? Do you think that you can push the people to uh, move up to a 2 and tell the head of state to move out of the yeah, reason, palace? Yeah, it will be difficult, but I will say it and repeat, it is very, very possible. Nobody could believe that up to date, the ongoing crisis that started as a child's play, teachers were flocked, lawyers were flocked, citizens like uh, you have uh, this guy who carried the coffin was that Mancho, BBC. B -B Mancho you know etc and then a lot of uh, guys from northwest were locked up released them without any uh, damage paid etc it is the, the moment we come whereby the east and end and it's not even far from now that we are talking reason being my brother enough is enough if you look at the way things are going you come to discover that most of the people who are on seat i'm talking of the state holders today they are not more comfortable with the system in place so a moment will come whereby cameroonians are supposed to go on street and take what belongs to them the system have been there for years upon years so crm is struggling to decentralize and put everything in order so yes, it yes. is by normal and i'm sure cameroonians are ready and they are just waiting for that day the uh, leaders of the party were arrested including president maurice come to many of them and jailed for having organized unauthorized public yeah for nine months and, and you still want to go that way oh my god i think actually nothing is more than that we have drivers that their colleagues do have accidents but then today they are still driving so since our president the elected president maurice camto was caught and locked for nine months for no good reason and was released for no good reason today cameroonians are aware that he himself is ready to die for for the change and everybody will actually move on street when the moment will come Akumanga Jasper, member of the CRM political party. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it's my pleasure, and uh, I think uh, we should gear ourselves and be ready when time comes. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today.